Hello and welcome to Good News. Probably the biggest story of the summer, sexual icon Eamon Holmes can make women orgasm just by saying their name. That's where she is this morning. Good morning, Isabel. Oh. <laughs> now, if you're planning to interrupt someone on the news, this is how you do it. We're not here now. <laughs> A human who makes an animal noise? If only there was an animal who makes human noises. Perhaps a cat who could say no? Oh, no, 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 no. And finally, if you report from a windy pier, you get what you deserve. But if there's a big wave, I am going to step out just slightly. Oh, God, oh. Oh. So, the big news this week was all about Colonel Gaddafi. The end of a dictator. It's been a landmark day for the people of Libya as it was announced that the dictator who terrorised the Libyan people for over four decades he was found hiding in a drainage pipe and shot dead in his home city of Sirte in Libya. Now, it may just have been me, but the Libyan people didn't really seem that bothered. <laughs> And the cars were dancing. <laughs> it was insane. One bloke turned up with the FA Cup. And we hope that the chapter is closed forever. Everyone was happy. I say everyone. I bet pigeons in Libya were terrified. <laughs> Stop shooting us! <laughs> we hated him too! <laughs> Jesus Christ! I mean, Allah, I'm Libyan. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what the rebels found on Gaddafi? The prize find is proudly shown off here as fighters parade through the streets with it, the former leader's golden gun. The man with the golden gun, more like the man with the melty face. <laughs> How his final words were, don't shoot. I think he missed a trick. He'd done so many terrible things. He could have used that moment to finally do something good. Would have been great if his last words were, I am just the puppet. <laughs> the real master is Justin Bieber. <laughs> he dies tonight! <laughs> Would have been a lovely one. One of the main talking points about the whole story was how Gaddafi died. Some say he was executed, some say he was killed in crossfire. Others claim he committed suicide after learning this tragic news. The uh, Irish boy band Westlife is to break up. No! <laughs> Everybody's looking for that something. <laughs> Cameron and Barack Obama both issued statements addressing Gaddafi's death. I think today is a day to remember all of Colonel Gaddafi's victims. This marks the end of a long and painful chapter for the people of Libya. Italian bunga bunga Lord Silvio Berlusconi, not as fussed. He was too busy texting Hillary Clinton a photo of his penis. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty more where that came from. <laughs> Back in Britain, it was all kicking off at a farm in Basildon. Police and bailiffs are now in almost total control of Dale Farm after storming the illegal travellers' site at dawn. There were violent clashes as bricks and other missiles were thrown and the police responded with tasers. And what headline did the sun go with? <coughs> Farmageddon! <laughs> So, so, what kind of sophisticated tactics do the protesters use? Something to get the public on their side? Not really. They drop their pants to urinate on officers. <laughs> Why, Dave, I've done a wee on a policeman! <laughs> I'm like Gandhi! <laughs> One lady turned up with a crucifix. Who brings a crucifix to a protest? The police are not vampires. <laughs> She's a long-time activist. You know what her name is? She's called Minty Chalice. <laughs> it sounds like something Boris Johnson calls a vagina. <laughs> Did anyone see the protesters on the scaffold? But it pretty much means that the police have taken control of 
the lion's share of Dale Farm. I was watching it thinking, where have I seen that before? <laughs> Over in Europe, it's bad news for noisy pets. The town of Kherson in Ukraine has banned animals from making noise at night. Pet owners now have to stop their furry friends from making noise between 10 at night and 8 in the morning. <laughs> this is great news for burglars. Some dog. What is it, boy? It's a fucking... I don't know what you're on about. It's a fucking furry. What are you two fucking doing? Bloke comes down in the morning. Oh, we've been burgled. I'm trying to fucking tell you. <laughs> Not only that, they've done a the shit on the floor. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was your burger. <laughs> it isn't just dogs that they're clamping down on. The new law doesn't just apply to cats and dogs. No. Goats bleating, cows mooing, and pigs what? oinking will get the owners into trouble. Who the fuck has a pet cow? <laughs> People watching the X Factor next to a bullock. I agree, Daisy. Frankie does look like he's got crabs. <laughs> Why? Why stop pets from making noise? If you're going to silence any animal at night, it should be foxes. Have you ever heard them make love? <laughs> ah! Ah! It's terrifying. <laughs> pets aren't like that. If you ban pets from making noise, you'll miss out on dogs that sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get rid of that! <laughs> and goats. Lovely goats that sound a little bit broken. <laughs> Don't get rid of those noises! <laughs> From the Ukraine to Egypt, and an insane story about a bloke who resembles a dead man. An Egyptian man shares an unfortunate doppelganger. Executed Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. They're not lying. Check this out. <laughs> so, you're probably thinking, well, now Saddam's dead. I doubt his life is that bad. Mohammed Bashir not only has to deal with people on the street harassing him for looking like Saddam Hussein, he also has to evade the Iraqi gang that's trying to kidnap him and force him to star in their porn movies. Unbelievable, isn't it? Nobody sees that coming. <laughs> Who does that bloke look like? You know what we could make him do? Yeah! <laughs> it's the weirdest kidnap ever. What are our demands? We want you to make love to beautiful women over and over. What do you think about that? Oh, no. <laughs> Better scream for help, I suppose. <laughs> no one's coming. Let's drop it like it's hot. <laughs> Who's your bag daddy? <laughs> I like it. Saddam Hussein porn. Can you imagine the trailer? We thought he had weapons of mass destruction. Turns out he had a weapon of ass destruction. Saddam Hussein is the dick team. Coming soon. Over to America and a report about a woman who attacked police in a rather unusual manner. When Delaware County deputies arrived, Robinette was already in the passenger seat of her car. She cursed at the deputies when they tried to get her out and then sprayed them with bodily fluids. <laughs> bodily fluids? She pulled out one of her breasts and started literally milking it and spraying breast milk uh, towards the officers. Breast milk. <laughs> so like filthy super soaker. <laughs> so, what happened to this grubby criminal? 
They kept talking to her and were finally able to take her out of the car, cuff her, and take her to jail. They got her out of the car, but not before they had this amazing conversation. Please put your breast away. Please right off me of my American right. Robinette had become belligerent. Go as my husband. Swearing and calling the officer racist. Why am I being racist? Oh, because I'm a female. Brilliant. You're racist because I'm female. <laughs> and you're sexist because I'm a black man. <laughs> what I don't understand about this story, why is she attacking the police? She's clearly got talented boobs. <laughs> she should use her powers for good. Give us your bar! <laughs> The biggest sports story of the week was this. Football Manchester United suffered a humiliating 6-1 thrashing at the hands of local rivals Manchester City. It's United's heaviest home defeat in Premier League history. 6-1! <laughs> Brutal, wasn't it? I haven't seen a pounding like that since I watched that Saddam porn. <laughs> <laughs> the game was incredible, but I'll be honest, the thing that really caught my eye what did Man City's crazy striker, Mario Balotelli, do the night before the game? Did he go to bed early? Did he have a chamomile tea? Mario Balotelli has escaped unharmed after setting his house on fire by letting off fireworks in his bathroom. <laughs> he let fireworks off in his bathroom? What was he doing? Celebrating the shit? <laughs> that was a really good one. Really good, that. Like the Catherine wheel, let's do this. <laughs> Apparently, firemen were at his house until three in the morning. Is anyone else thinking what I'm thinking? Fire in the bathroom. Turn the fucking shower on! <laughs> so, what happened to Balotelli after the fire? Did he get fined by his club, cautioned by the police? Not really. He's now, would you believe, the face of a regional fireworks safety campaign. <laughs> seen what we're doing with our bins. The life of a litter bin must sometimes be a lonely one. There's now a new weapon in the war on waste. It may just look like an ordinary bin, but this one has plenty to say for itself. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Just wanted to say thanks for the rubbish. And I just wanted to say this is bullshit. <laughs> Why are we spending money on bins that say thank you? Are people going, I'll only stop littering if the bin is nice to me. <laughs> Next you'll be telling me I can't piss on a policeman. <laughs> Don't give bins voices. How depressing would it be to hear the dog monk bin? Imagine that. No. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> oh, God alive. <laughs> Has anybody got a mint? <laughs> In case some of you are interested, they don't just say thank you. They sing, they talk and sometimes even burp. Don't <laughs> use a burp. If you want a noise which will encourage people to put rubbish in a bin, surely it's this one. <laughs> <laughs> Do the noise again, it's the best thing I've ever heard of. If you heard that, every time you put something in a bin, Britain would be cleaner than a nun's hard drive. Imagine this. Right? <laughs> it isn't just burping, celebrities are voicing some of the bins. The likes of Amanda Holden, cricketer Phil Tufnell and Michael Palin all volunteering their voices. Madness. If you're going to use any celebrity, surely you use this guy. <laughs> He'd be the angriest bin ever. Nobody would drop litter if a bin called you this. Book a shit, fuck shit, <laughs> fucking sphincter, <laughs> asshole up your ass, up your <laughs> fucking sideways, you fucking boring fucking whore, fuck off, you cow! <laughs> All right, oh, I'll put it in the bin. <laughs> Sorry, Brian, that bin's got a real temper. <laughs> Now, next up, let's meet a guy who's got an unusual companion. Usually it's a dog that's a man's best friend, but for Barry Heyman, it doesn't walk on four paws, it waddles on two webbed feet. 
His best friend is a duck named Star. Don't! Oh, stop it! He's best mates with a duck! He just put bread in his socks. He won't leave me alone. Yeah, cos you're covered in hovish, you lunatic. <laughs> he doesn't just take the duck out in the cart. Look where else they go. Down the shops or ducking into the pub for a pint. Oh, a duck in a pub. He must get so sick of the jokes. <laughs> Who's paying the bill? Very good. <laughs> Got some cheese and crackers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 who's your wingman? Fuck off, Brian. No wonder your wife left. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. I hate you, Brian. <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> For me, it's madness. Don't choose a dog. If you're going to be best friends with any animal, it would have to be this guy. <laughs> <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> Moving along, have a look at this shocking tale about prejudice. Now the world's largest sperm bank is saying thanks, but no thanks to one pool of potential donors. People with red hair. <laughs> Isn't it shocking, man? Don't applaud. Don't applaud. It's horrible. Ginger people aren't allowed to donate sperm. How unfair is that? Straight no protest. We've got sperm. You've got money. Let us in. It's really sunny. <laughs> what I want to know, how do you identify ginger sperm? Can you tell under a microscope? <laughs> it's such a ridiculous idea. Listen to the reason why they're banning our red-headed friends. The problem is, given the choice, the majority of women would prefer a child and a partner with the more commonly found blonde or dark hair. Bullshit! Like, hair colour is the only indicator of beauty. Do you prefer this lady? Or... Jody Marsh? <laughs> She's got brown hair, yeah, but she looks like a fucking Toblerone. <laughs> Perhaps the most worrying part of the story is this. This ginger rejection comes as some geneticists predict natural redheads could become extinct within 100 years. This is awful, isn't it? Do you reckon soon people will be watching programmes like this? <laughs> Moving on. It's been a worrying discovery for women. Do you see this? Working women look their best for just two hours and 22 minutes. A study found that the beautifully styled hairdo and fully made-up face is history by precisely 10.03 a.m. <laughs> so, basically, girls, you can do whatever you want to look pretty, but at 10.03 in the morning, <laughs> it will all fade. <laughs> to be honest, I've noticed that myself. the show I genuinely don't know anything about. There's going to be a mystery guest who's been in the news and I've got to figure out who that person is. So, please welcome my mystery guest. <laughs> it does scream sex offender, doesn't it? <laughs> I'll wait for it. I'll, I'll make my way gingerly. <laughs> but I have a feeling that Mr Tumless... <laughs> ..may be a little bit weirder than usual. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. <laughs> Can I have my ball back? <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you doing in a hedge? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Very rare you get to start an interview like that and that be the correct opening question. <laughs> 
What's that what you're doing in the hedge? I spend a lot of time um, out in my environment, out in rural areas during the night time. OK. <laughs> Are you a keen dogger? <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. No. Um, presumably you're watching, uh, looking at nature, I imagine, in the West Country. I am in the West Country and I spend a lot of time in the rural areas uh, during the night time. Um, OK. Without giving too much away. <laughs> hey, oh, I know who you are. I know who you are. You are, um, you're the Oval Ninja. Yes, I am. Yes, I knew it. It's great. Come out. OK, there we go. Uh, I mean, huh? Do you want to stand back, then? Uh, uh, uh. Well, I sort of regret calling you a pervert now. <laughs> it's, not it's not very often you call someone a sex offender and then they rock up dressed like oh. Darth Maul. <laughs> I'd love to go there, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I'm the Yeovil Ninja. Um, and today we're going to get you geared up in the ninja suit. I'm going to give you a crash course in becoming a ninja. Well, I'm absolutely involved now. Yeah. This will be exciting. Uh, uh, first of all, we're going to see a clip. OK. Sweet. Um, why did you become the Yeovil Ninja? I wanted to know how to move like a ninja in the shadows during the night time as a young boy. Yeah. I sort of made contacts with ninjas, practitioners from around the world, and learning the arts of ninja out in the shadows, using anything that benefit me as a ninja today. Cool, let's do this. Right, so one thing we'll go through is moving. So what yep. we do is we keep our hands close to our chest. Yep. So you move yep. across, keeping very silent, aware of your surroundings. And what you do is, when you lift furthest legs out, you go down to one knee. <laughs> now, when you're down on one knee, you want to observe your surroundings, whether it be smell, sight, use your awareness. <laughs> uh, if you've got other members, you mean... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... I don't think we're in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, uh, what, what we do is, moving as a ninja, we move in, bound, and I'm always looking at the next point of concealment. Yep. And you're aware, you'll hear people coming from a distance. I actually use a hearing aid, sometimes over normal hearing, to amplify the surroundings. And I can hear conversations from... Benefit G. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> so then you get up, and then... <laughs> Mommy, there's a man book in the garden. <laughs> Sorry, sir. So, yeah, we're moving bounds, crossing legs, transferring the weight and getting in your way. <laughs> next is the serpent movement. Serpent. Serpent. You're down on your knees. And what we do is, we might use the dead ground, yep. OK? And we're moving up to a position. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can call that the serpent or that's crawling. That's what that <laughs> OK. All right? Yeah. Now, what do your family think of this? Are you, are you married? Yes, I'm married with two kids. Oh, sweet. One's five. I started teaching them about shows at the age of three. Oh, nice. So... He's probably got the old serpent thing down pretty quick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he he's pretty knows. Yeah. He is a natural, yeah. Did you spray paint his nappy black? <laughs> 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 Have you got any other skills you can teach me? I've got many different striking techniques. Okay. Um, there is pressure points as well. Oh, um, I fucking hate these ones. <laughs> but there's a thing. <laughs> Go on. Well, I teach 45 pressure points from pain, unconsciousness, and death. Right. Okay? That's, <laughs> that's right from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so, just very basic, and you've got a pressure point just between your. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Yeah. Just between your collarbone. If you push uh, down in there. <laughs> yeah, I sound like a pug. <laughs> um, if you go to dummy with your right hand. <laughs> Sorry. Go to dummy. <laughs> Sorry, nice. Go to the dummy there. Yep. Yeah. What I could do is I got I can influence your body by moving through and flipping you over. In this case, I'd raise your armpit and strike Whack. up into yeah, the that armpit, yeah. and it sends your body into shock, and you collapse. Yep. <laughs> and then you got Whoa. the monkey swing. The monkey swing, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you throw in a oh ah! As you, oh. Huh? They're straight into it, and they're just very basic ones. Obviously, you yeah. can't show too much. So it's that there and the monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what an excellent way of ending a lovely random interview. Ladies and gentlemen, please do that. The Oval Ninja! <laughs> now, we all know that being a student is tough. You can get a degree, but you also end up with a massive debt. 
Well, these guys have come up with a novel solution. Two graduates have come up with a rather unusual solution to this all by selling advertising on their face. They set up buymyface.com where people and companies could advertise anything on their face for a day. Bizarrely, their plan is working. The idea has proven a hit. They've made three and a half thousand pounds and they're just two weeks in. Three and a half grand and counting. It's a great idea. I liked it so much. I found the actual guys and I gave them a hundred quid to do this. No, 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 no. <laughs> and once I'd paid them to do that, I had to make them do this. <laughs> I had to. This is amazing. Now, you may remember last series I showed you a story about cystic fibrosis sufferer Kirsty Mills. I don't know if you remember it. How about this for a fantastic update? Kirsty has cystic fibrosis. Kirsty's lungs had become so badly damaged in March this year, doctors told her she had at best two and a half years left to live. By May, they had revised the estimate to six months. Regardless, Kirsty went on to get married, even though she spent the days leading up to her wedding in intensive care. New lungs would prolong her life, and she was on the transplant waiting list. The decision was made after the wedding to airlift her to the transplant hospital in London so that she'd be ready if a donor became available. Earlier on in that day, I, my um, husband and mum had been called in, and they knew it was a matter of hours that I had left. Um, and then it was a surprise that, you know, a lung, pair of lungs became available. They didn't know if I was too ill at that point to be transplanted. Um, and I really didn't have lung left in that day. Um, and I was kept on bypass until the lungs arrived. And they were transplanted. No one can tell you how hard transplant's going to be. But no one can really tell you how good it is once you, you get into recovery. Um, and just doing simple things just feels amazing and being able to plan what me and Stuart are going to do with our future. Beautiful, isn't it? Hey. Thanks very much for watching Good News. I really hope you enjoyed it. See ya.